there's essentially no information on classical mantel pieces online or on YouTube or anything. There's there's basic mantels. I've done basic mantels, but nothing like traditional architecture. And the reason I bring that up is because where I'm getting all my ideas for this mantle is from these books right here. I've built essentially a small library hunting down these books on old mantles and I'm gonna drop some of these images in as we go throughout this build. I think it'll really help you visualize what I'm trying to execute on here and see where I'm getting these ideas because I've gotten questions like what why did you you know do that little outside corner there, the cross sided corner? You know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's it's all because of these historic books right here. Like here's an example of a book I picked up. It's called Dr. Johnson's Doorknob. He has a section in here called Great Men's Mantelpieces. And if you look through this, I mean, it has Thomas Jefferson's mantelpiece in here. This is literally George Washington's mantelpiece, the small dining room in Mount Vernon, which is a house George Washington built. This is, you see this cross-headed corner detail. I copied that. It's a very traditional detail. I'm going to be copying these brackets. We're going to get into that in this video. Obviously not to the level of carving that these are done to, um, but I do like that bracket right there. So I'm going to copy it. And I've got this other book right here. This was actually withdrawn from the University of Nebraska library. And they basically rejected this book because nobody wants this stuff anymore. There's another side image of a bracket. And this book, guys, is so amazing. Like what they have is the drawings that the architect drew and then how the tradesmen executed on it. But if you look at this, you see this detail right here? This is called a cornice, and we're gonna get into building something very similar to that in this video. I'm gonna essentially copy that. Notice the cove detail, the little drip edge. So in this book, American Colonial, towards the end, there's several examples of classical fireplace mantles with over mantles. This one right here is a huge inspiration for me with the marble cross headed corner, the small wainscot, the uh, pencil molding, if you guys have been following along, you know the pencil molding goes through there, it, it goes up, we're gonna do that detail as well. This large frieze, the brackets, I'm gonna do a cornice very similar to that one as well. I think you get my point. There is a ton of information in here, not only on historic mantel pieces, like the one that we're building, the house we're doing right now has an awesome Palladian window. It's right up there. And we actually restored that one last year. and it's properly flashed now, and it's gonna last a very long time. So we're gonna start building up some of those details I just shared with you guys. I'll drop in some images as we build this, and we're gonna get started on our brackets right now. And to make these brackets, I'm gonna be using a piece of Spanish cedar in the rough. This is a piece of eight quarter. I'm just gonna dimension this down to my desired specs that I figured out for the size of the brackets, and I'm just using the joiner to dimension this down. I'm not even gonna run it through the planer. So I'll rip it there and also cross cut it. And when I cross cut it, I'm looking for four blocks that are the exact same size. And these are oversized to my final dimensions so I can then run them across the joiner later once everything's glued up. Just to clean the squeeze out and the unevenness of the clamps. Because whenever you clamp something together like this that has so much glue on it, it has a tendency to slide and not stay exactly where you clamped it. So it's always good to make things a little bit oversized. So now that it's cured up, we can take it out and you can see all that glue drip out right there. I'll just get these out of the clamps and have my two blocks here. I can run across the joiner and clean them up. And they're still not to their exact size because what I'm gonna do first is put my profile on them. I'm using here a two and a half gallon bucket and then a quart of Bondo to make the shape that I like. I played with a few different profiles there and I'm going with this inside one. So I'll cut this out on the bandsaw and don't laugh at me because I'm using a resaw blade right here. Completely uncalled for, but I did not have a contour blade on me and I wasn't about to run out and go grab one. So we're using the resaw and I'm just gonna take little, little passes at it. And it, it actually ended up pretty rough but you'll see me take care of it uh, later on. 
with the surf prep sander. So now that I have it on one shape or one block, one shape on the block, I can just transfer that shape onto my other block. And here are the two brackets. So with the surf prep sander and that cushion pad right there, I can get all into the uh, profile of the curves of this bracket and it just cleans up all the uh, kind of rough cuts from the bandsaw that wouldn't have been as rough if I had the right blade, but you can see it before and after there. And here I am now dimensioning them down to their final heights and then I'll cut them to their final widths as well. But um, there's my two brackets right there. And once my brackets are complete, I'll go ahead and pre-drill. This will make install much easier. I'll pre-drill with an eighth inch bit here. I'll be attaching these with screws and nails. So the screws are going into this thick part of the profile. So I'm using eighth inch bit and I'm gonna chase that with the countersink. And with that complete, I'll go ahead and shoot them with some spray primer. You know, I like to do this if you've been following just cause it gives you a real feel for how the project's coming together. I've got a mark right here exactly where I'm gonna install this. This is my line. So these were made specifically to go from inside here. So basically I just took that line up. If you follow this inside of that trim, you'll land on that line. And then to this marble here. So if I line up here, we're lined up here, and then we're lined up here. I'm just gonna shoot finish nails in the bottom here. These are two and a half inch, and they are long enough to go through there. With our brackets now installed, we can move on to the next component in the build, which is the actual shelf. Technically, this is gonna be built up in a cornice fashion. And here is a look at our bed mold. So a cornice is made up of a bed mold, Corona, and Sima. And this is the first piece in that composure. This is a bed mold. You see it has a notch there, and I'm gonna to need to mill something for that to lock into. So you'll also notice the lifting angle here, the lifting profile rather, that's very important in a bed mold. And to mill the piece for the bed mold to lock into, we're going to take this 5 quarter by 4 stock here and rip it right in half. This is going to give us two boards. This is going to be plenty of material to wrap around the top profile of our mantle. And then we're going to send them through the router table with this mortising bit and cut this rabbit joint on it. And it's going to create this L shape and this shape here. I have it set up perfectly so that when we bring our bed mold profile into this shape, it's going to lock it in place and allow it to be cradled essentially. So that gives us a location to install it and essentially just forces it into the correct position. So I milled this so I could put it right on top of our freeze board, get it installed, and then as we wrap around our brackets here, we're going to install these at the outermost point of our bracket. So you can see there I'm gluing and clamping this up. I'm going to line it up with the edge there and then send it home with some finished nails. I'll do this on both sides, of course. And then here's a view of how that looks. And then you can see how our bed mold would just lock into that. This is what I was talking about when I said it's gonna put it in the perfect position so we don't even have to think about if it's at the right angle. That bottom piece is just gonna lock it in right where it needs to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these pieces installed. I'm gonna spare showing you guys every single cut because essentially we're just cutting 45s. I'm just 45ing around my two brackets here with each piece of molding and that's how it's gonna be for building up this whole entire cornice build. So I'm gonna put some glue on the back there and send this home with some pin nails temporarily. And then I'll add some more blocking later that we can really lock it in with, with some 15 gauge nails. And then finish up on the other side, of course, basically working from one side to another with each molding. And here I'm dropping in a block and support for the next component in our build, which is our soffit. So I'm gonna be adding multiple blocks and it's very important that these blocks are perfectly level with the bed mold that we just installed. So I'm gonna check this in multiple places and you can see the level setting on the support and the bed mold. You can see it's perfectly level right there. So that tells me whatever I rip that to, I'm gonna rip more blocking to that. And this tells me what to cut the angle at when I drop this blocking in. And it's reading 50 degrees is what that bed molding springs out at. 
So coming back with my small blocks for supporting the soffit, I can drop these in. They have that angle cut on them and they'll fit perfectly in there. And these not only support the soffit, but they also give me a location to shoot in through my bed molding into the block and really get everything locked together as one. And I'll do this on the other side as well. And that'll get the support complete for that. And after getting these in, I just hit them with the sander with some 80 grit just to make sure they were super flush so that when I drop my soffit on, it's good to go. Now for our soffit installation, we're going to make it project past our bed mold one inch. You can see my little sketch there on the wall. And if I measure this piece, it's gonna give me four and a quarter but adding an inch brings us out obviously to five and a quarter. And when I get my first soffit piece cut here, if I line it up on the miter, I know for a fact I'm sticking out one inch past the end of the bed molding because I cut it to that five and a quarter. So I will get this installed and essentially wrap the entire top of the bed molding with this soffit, adding one inch and if I hook on here, I only have to add that one inch. But if I measure from bed mold to bed mold, obviously I would have to add two inches. This only goes for this outside miter to outside miter. Then just wrapping all the way around inside of this using that same technique and making sure I'm an inch proud. There's a look at the bed molding with the soffit. And at this point, I'm feeling so good because so much work goes into this mantle and to see an actual shelf go up is just a really good feeling. So with our soffit board install complete, we can begin working on our fascia. And it's just like exterior stuff, the soffit and fascia in this cornice are called the corona. But since it is exterior, you'll see a lot of these interior details even have a drip edge. So that's why I'm milling this cove onto our fascia board here. And this will be installed facing inward. So you might ask why, why would you make a cove and do this profile? and face it inward. Well, you'll see later, I'll point it out to you, it really makes a lightweight profile when viewed from the side or viewed from the bottom. Now this mantle won't be viewed from the bottom a lot, but it will be viewed from the side. And when viewing it from the side, you will be able to see this bottom portion of the profile that's currently between my thumb and index finger, and it will make a big difference. So it really lightens it up. And then you'll notice when I install this, I'm gonna make it flush with our previously installed soffit board. So as long as I'm in that correct position, soffit lining up with Cove, I can get each piece installed around the mantle. And you'll notice this board is quite tall. It might look a little odd right now, but it's taken into consideration the projection of the last molding that we'll install, which is the Sima and essentially a terminating crown molding that will be installed on top of this fascia board. With the soffit and fascia board installed, that completes the corona for the cornice, and this thing is really taking shape and starting to look like a piece of glorious classical architecture, and that just brings me so much joy. I've said it before, I will continue to say it throughout this entire mantle build series, every piece we add, just turns it up another level and motivates me to keep going. And here's a view of the side of the bottom of that fascia board with that cove profile. You can see how it really just lightens up the profile. Now before we install the final component of our cornice, which is the Sima, I'm gonna add support blocks for the shelf top, which we'll install later. And I'm gonna add just blockings at multiple locations to really lock this whole entire build together. This is a really strong structure. I'm using two and a half inch 15 gauge nails for this entire shelf cornice buildup. And I can tell you this thing is not going anywhere. So once I have this kind of framework laid out, I can bring in a temporary shelf top. And the whole purpose of this is really just to give me a ceiling, essentially, for my last piece in the build, which is the Sima. And you may recognize this piece. This is a very, very standard piece, but it's actually very historically accurate. If you look at historic pattern books, this colonial, as we know it, is what we call it down here in Texas, this colonial crown molding is um, very, very popular, and it actually has a very nice profile to it. So this is what I'm gonna use to wrap around 
as my final component in the cornice. As I mentioned, this is called the Sima. And you'll notice here, as long as I'm flush with my temporary shelf top, I know that I'm in the right position and I can send this home with some pins temporarily and I'll come back and shoot it with some 15 gauge. Here's our first corner of the cornice build up complete and you know the drill by now. We're going to continue down the rest of the mantle, get this thing wrapped up. We can now remove our temporary shelf top and this will give us visibility to our blocking locations. And we're gonna drive a 15 gauge nail through our molding right into those blocking locations and really give this some strength. And just like that, we have ourselves a mantle shelf. We still need to do the top to complete the actual mantle, but uh, that we'll get into in the next video. And if you weren't doing an over mantle, at this point, you would essentially be done. Put your top on and get ready for prep and paint. We're, we're far from that though. I gotta, I gotta let you know, we still have a pretty good long road ahead of us. Moving up the over mantle, which is over the mantle, as the name insinuates, we're going to build up the frame for around our frame TV. And then we're gonna move up to our architrave freeze in the cornice, all the way up to our pediment. Now I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do a closed pediment or broken pediment. I'm still kind of kicking that idea around and I'm still kind of kicking the idea around of incorporating some white oak into this build. If you've been following my remodel here at the house, then you know, I love white oak. I use it for my doors, my floors. Anytime there's like a natural wood, it's white oak all the way. So here's my ideas. I may put a white oak shelf top on here. I think that would be a nice contrast. I also have seen that in uh, traditional classical builds. And I may put a white oak frieze ornamentation right here. So just some kind of design right here in the frieze. That I can decide later. I, I do need to figure out though what I'm gonna do with the shelf top because that is literally the next thing we're gonna get into. So thank you guys so much for following along on this build and I'll see you next time.